new broadcaster journalist and the finalist for 2021, Charlotte Cook, RNZ National. <laughs> Katie Todd, RNZ National. Aaron Darman, Newstalk ZB. And the winner is Aaron Darman, Newstalk ZB. <laughs> What do you mean when you say it's time to stop blaming the system for obesity and people need to start taking personal responsibility? Exactly what I said. Do you think it's the epidemic? No, it's not catching. And what do you make of calls in the wake? What do you make of calls in the wake of your comments to make discrimination based on weight illegal? Oh come on! Look, um, you know, many of us can do better on this. I tell you what. Uh, take some personal responsibility. And some have called your comments heartless, your response. Mm -hmm. Do you know what is heartless? Is actually thinking that someone else can cure these issues. We can all take personal responsibility and we all have to own up to our little weaknesses on these matters. Thank Do you. Do you think obesity is a weakness? Yes, generally. Comprehensive coverage from around the country on your home for Vote 2020. This is News Talk ZB News. Another day on the hustings and another mobbed walkabout for Jacinda Ardern. Political reporter Aaron Darman is following the Labour leader in Gisborne with just nine days to go until October 17. Thanks for coming to say hi. 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 Streets full, smiles wide, and the rock star reception Jacinda Ardern's become accustomed to wherever she goes. There were screams and cheers as she emerged from her van. Then Ardern was swarmed, throngs of people asking for selfies and lauding her leadership. Weather has added some drama to the campaign trail for Judith Collins. The national leader's flight from Auckland to Rotorua was delayed due to fog. News Talk ZB political reporter Aaron Darman was on the same flight and says after finally getting in the air, there was a failed landing attempt at Rotorua. And so we had to go up, we had to go around, we had to circle Rotorua for about 10 to 15 minutes before we finally managed to break through that fog and we're landed, we're here uh, and Collins is en route to her first engagement of the day. It was an afternoon at the hot pools, though Nationals leader couldn't quite be convinced to take a dip herself. I think it's, uh, it's an excellent idea, but I won't be doing it just now, primarily because I haven't brought my togs. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a very modest person. It's five o'clock, I'm Raylene Ramsey. Judith Collins hit the hustings in the capital today with four days until October 17. Political reporter Aaron Darman was with the national leader who spent the day shoring up blue votes in Wellington's Ohario and Otaki electorates. The scene was a packed Waikanae bowling club, the pitch two ticks blue and the star 11-year-old Manaya, a wannabe politician who asked Judith Collins what it's like being the National Party leader. Collins told the crowd she loves it and the proof was in her beam when she was gifted blue frosted donuts from a fan before a brief chat with former Prime Minister Jim Bolger. Collins' speech to the bowling club included a crack at Jacinda Ardern and the COVID-19 testing of border-facing staff. When she says she went hard and fast, she went slow and pathetic and actually the other thing she did is she lied to us about what was happening and I'm happy to say that on the record she lied. Two sleeps to go and Jacinda Ardern's gearing up for showtime. Political reporter Aaron Darman's at Auckland Civic Theatre with the Labour leader who's drawing on tips from Broadway ahead of Election Day. Anything can happen, it's a She's auditioning to be the country's lead actor on Saturday night, but today Jacinda Ardern's learning from the best. You might recognise that tune from musical Mary Poppins and I'm standing just outside the theatre where Ardern's getting a sneak peek before the show opens tomorrow. Live on air on iHeartRadio and streaming at nzherald.co.nz. It's Vote 2020, Election Night. Aaron Darman's with us uh, at National Party Headquarters, which is the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron. Aaron, you and how many? Well, I tell you what, there's probably about 50 to 100 people here. We weren't expecting a party, but this is a subdued affair. There's nothing sweet about this. In fact, the sweetest thing is probably the macaroons with the National Party logos that are out uh, in the cafeteria. Look, there's Melissa Lee. She's the only MP we've spotted here tonight. Judith Collins, we understand, has left her home. She's on the way to Sky City Grand, potentially at this point, to write her concession speech. It is not looking good here, Mike. Very good. I thought you were going to say place and 
blackjack at the casino. <laughs> but uh, what a tough old night for her. So that's Aaron Darman at the, uh, the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron. The health minister says he shouldn't resign over a botch up that seen two people test positive for COVID-19 after being let out of managed isolation. David Clark says ministers were assured protocols were being followed and this is unacceptable. But when Newstalk ZB's Aaron Darman asked his opinion of health boss Ashley Bloomfield's actions, Clark wasn't pointing the finger. Have you been let down by Dr Bloomfield? Uh, look, I, I am very disappointed to learn uh, that the protocols have not been followed as they were clearly outlined. A monumental day in the fight against COVID-19 and high-level warnings not to take our foot off the pedal. New Zealand today has no new cases of the virus, with just four people in hospital. Dr Ashley Bloomfield has a clear message, saying it's cause for celebration, but we mustn't be complacent. The important thing here, of course, is that we are still wanting to be sure that there is no undetected community transmission. Politics. Politics. All right, uh, wherever there are rules, there are rule breakers, of course, and security now outside that um, apartment complex in Vincent Street. Well, it would appear like a bit of a clangor, actually, at the epicentre of this latest COVID case. Minister Hipkins, he told us they've stationed people today at Auckland's Vincent Street residences after reports of people coming and going. He was then pressed on whether it should have been done sooner, potentially last night, at which point Hipkins revealed, well, that was actually the plan. My understanding was that the public health were going to be there last night. It became apparent early this morning that there weren't people at the front door there this morning. Um, and so as soon as I became aware of that, we got on the phone and made sure that that happened. We have just half an hour to wait until a decision on the next steps to stamp out our COVID-19 outbreak. Political reporter Aaron Darman is at Parliament and says Cabinet's been thrashing out the details since three o'clock. 18 ministers will be looking for key pieces of the puzzle, including the extent of the outbreak and if the original source can be pinned down. It comes just hours after we recorded 13 new confirmed and probable community cases of COVID-19. Coming up to seven past eight. I was just about to hop in the shower and I looked at my phone and there's this email, astounding, I had to read it twice. Todd Muller resigned as leader of the opposition. I thought, you've got to be joking. Yeah, well, I think the first question, uh, Aaron, is, look, it came as a shock to everyone, including you. Was there any murmurings of this uh, in Parliament or in the Beehive in the last week or so? I mean, there's always uh, been murmurings, I think, around the whole coup, around Todd Muller coming into the role. I was there on the 22nd of May when he uh, launched that coup and rolled Simon Bridges. That was 53 days ago. Now he's gone. Of course, we know leaks, emails, they've plagued him from the start. This is News Talks at B News. It's nine o'clock. I'm Tony Doe. Two hours into Nationals' crisis meeting to decide their new leader. We're hearing there could be a decision shortly. Political reporter Aaron Darman is at Parliament and says no one knows exactly yet how it'll play out. National MPs entered the meeting behind a blue party banner around seven o'clock with no guarantees a new leader will emerge tonight. Ahead of the crisis caucus meeting, it was understood Judith Collins and former leader Simon Bridges were top picks to take charge of the embattled party. The new team in charge can't really get their ducks in a row as much as they'd like. By the end of the week, they were missing, but during it was already steady and interesting facts with Jerry. Uh, and uh, if you looked over the last two weeks and you went, OK, how badly could these two weeks go for the National Party, bar perhaps Judith Collins coming into the leadership seat and really uh, taking the reins there, you, you couldn't make it up. While it might not be quite the golden ticket to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, finance and opposition is an audition for the keys to the Crown coffers. And Paul Goldsmith, well, he has been locked out. It's five o'clock. Good morning. I'm Neva Reddy Manu. A major surge in Kiwis picking up the tools. News Talk ZB's obtained exclusive figures that show our largest provider of construction apprenticeships has doubled enrolments on this time last year. Long-awaited vaping legislation still nowhere to be seen, almost six months after the Ministry of Health urged the government to act quickly. A July memo released to Newstalk ZB under the Official Information Act highlights the fast growth of vaping and similar technology. Our health ministry has put on ice proposals to use the COVID tracer app to record isolating Kiwis' daily health checks. Political reporter Aaron Darman says Newstalk ZB can reveal the function was forecast to be rolled out in May. 
quite tangy day and it is 18 past 6. It's been a week of political theatre. We had Simon Bridges against Winston Peters on the Pai Pai on Tuesday. We had Iwi Chairs challenging the government on Māori issues yesterday. But today, tensions are being put aside as we remember 180 years since the signing of Te Tiriti or Waitangi, the treaty. And of course, across uh, the treaty grounds, daylight's creeping up over the jet black sky. There's a chorus of cicadas playing melodies in the background and people watching on under the Pahuta car. But Tim, it's well and truly breaking into a new dawn here, Waitangi Day 2020.